Fight fans, welcome back into the Loom Color Center here in Ontario, California. Red Promotion presents Unfinished Business. And Unfinished Business indeed, as we have Christian Camacho, Alexis DeLuna. It's for all the marbles, folks. For the GBO for Continental Championship. And like we said, the winner of this springboards to the next big thing. That's exactly right. One of these gentlemen are going to have a nice little shiny thing to put in their luggage at the end of the night and have the bragging rights as well. Camacho being very aggressive here. Not something I expected. Like I said earlier at the show, much more of a slick fighter, trained out the Mayweather gym for some time. Uh, definitely more of a intelligent boxer than maybe even his father was. And right now he's being aggressive, trying to sort of set the pace, set the tone early, and uh, get DeLuna out of his comfort zone. Well, he seems to have some confidence going in there. He, he does know exactly what he's doing. He's taking control of the center of the ring. And he just seems to be really 
working on the timing of his opponent and, and the rain. He's going to get that in. But he definitely likes to have that center of the ring. He wants to control that area. He doesn't want to be caught back on the mm -hmm. in the corner or on those ring ropes. And Good combination by Camacho. Another thing to think about is that even though you know both guys have a similar record, you know, one's nine, one and one, one's nine and oh. Camacho though started his career in 2015. Took a couple years off in the ring. So even though he, in terms of fight experience, professional fight experience, is very similar to De Luna, he has years and years of more experience than De Luna. Camacho's 30 years old, De Luna's 22 years old. There is a significant age difference too. Camacho Maybe that age factor will be a positive, though, because he's still young enough, and that's years and years of being in the gym that DeLuna wasn't. Well, absolutely, and just being a second-generation fighter. There are other fighters in his family, so it runs in his blood. He, he kind of grew up with it. Yes, exactly. And, and there's a difference between starting young and growing up with something and having it just around you every single day being part of your, your whole your life, life and not part of just a part of it, going to gym or what, whatever. Your identity. It was, it, it was your whole identity, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why I think a lot of these second generation boxers, fighters, football players, what have you, are so good because they grew up in th that that environment that where they could learn the, the, the techniques from people that are, are very, uh, you know, very, very good, good yeah. uh, the best of the best when you reach the, you know, things like this and their champions and, and, and the, uh, Yeah, their baseline for success is far higher than the average athlete because they have the connections already. They have that, like you said, they're, they're walking around when they're born and it's their identity. Their, their father, their mother, whatever is an athlete. Is a professional athlete, so their experiences with it is far different, you know, like you said. The only issue is that they're always compared, of course, to their legendary uh, uh, parent. And often, it, you're, you're, not gonna, you're gonna come across as a poor second because you have a Hall of Fame father. You know, Camacho has to do so much, Christian Camacho has to do so much just to match that legacy. Look at Chavez Jr., he became a world champion, a legitimate world champion. And he's still decried and criticized for not being like his father enough. You and know? He's still in his father's shadow. Absolutely. And and and, and sometimes you just can't break those bonds. Uh, and, and it certainly goes in, in other uh, you know, sports. There, you know, look at Brian Long, and you know, he, and and well, here you go. We'll, we'll mesh it a little bit. Uh, we've got the Road Warrior with his son who played linebacker. You know. Yes. It's just you know, good athletes make other good athletes, whatever they end up wanting to be. Yes. And and growing up in a athletic household where the nutrition and the training and all thought is being placed on high level of, of, of active physical prowess, uh, you know, most, like you said, regular people don't grow up like that. No. And so they, they grow up with a higher knowledge of uh, a different level of understanding. And you can see it, you can see it coming out. Camacho trying to play defense here. Good body oh, shots good. by Camacho. I would say this, Camacho's offense has been quite impressive because he's been able to land some really hard body shots. He's doing a lot with that hook. But let's see if DeLuna can sort of come into the fight. Like right now, he seems to be getting a little more comfortable in there. He's saying he's back. Oh, he might have hurt him there. He said that was behind the head there. But either way, Alexis De Luna is very composed in there. He doesn't seem to be phased by who he's in there with. And you see Camacho sporting the Lakers shorts. I do like it. It's sort of like when Mayweather wears like the sombrero. He's fighting a Mexican fighter. He's coming to, over to LA, fighting the West Coast guy. Yes. He's wearing the Laker colors. <laughs> yes. A little bit of trolling, I like <laughs> a little it. Little troll, exactly. Yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, a little. Try to get just a little Good under the skin. Oh, that was very nice. And, and even though all the shots didn't land, it's it's combination work. You're gonna land one of those shots. You throw three, you land one, that's not bad. Yeah. Camacho 
Marshall Soto will doing some decent work to deflect that right hand from uh, DeLuna. And you can tell he was in Whitaker's camp because he, <laughs> I think I've seen <laughs> that yeah. before somewhere. <laughs> That was very slick defense, yeah. and once again, uh, Alexis Deluna is—he's not phased. He's not intimidated by the name. Oh, good he's jab there by Deluna. Oh, oh, left hook. I don't know if it's off balance. No, left hook there by Deluna. Left hook to the body. Right hand by Kamal too. Good, good round. Hook. That was a good round. That was a good round. I mean, I gave the first round to Camacho. But that second round, that's a little bit of a toss-up. Deluna landed some really good shots there. Camacho landed his own good shots. He may have leaned Deluna in that one. You know, that's yeah, that, that's a very tough round. Uh, Camacho seemed to come out and, and control it a little bit. But like you said, it, Deluna came out. It and kind of lost it a little bit in the round, control, yes. Yeah, yeah. And Deluna came back strong and connected with quite a few shots. And I don't know if he hurt Camacho or Camacho stumbled because he was off balance, but I mean, he hit him and he stumbled. He was going backwards. Yeah, yes. He was. So, you know, either way, you know, again. The damaging shot there was landed by DeLuna. Exactly, and the damage was done, and it was right there in front of the judge's eyes, so hopefully they've seen that. Third round already. It's just. It's just warming up, it seems like. They're yeah. just getting to... You almost want this to be like an eight-rounder instead of a six. Get that two extra rounds. It does, huh? Camacho should keep that jab up. Because when DeLuna does headhunt with that right hand, Camacho does an excellent job of avoiding it. It's only the body work of DeLuna that Camacho really can't deal with right now. Like right, right there. Right but there. good counter by Camacho. Yeah, very good counter. And, and, and you can really see that even in his offense, he's ready to throw up that shoulder and arm and, and defend. Yes. Uh, and, and you can tell almost from his stance that he's ready to throw that up at any moment. And that's probably why DeLuna's a little bit hesitant to jump in there, because Camacho has landed a few shots already. And even though he doesn't have the most power, you just have to respect someone that's hitting you with shots. Absolutely. Oh. And, and I don't think Camacho is going to be able to drop that left hand too many times uh, and not eat a few punches. I don't know if that's yeah. the best thing to, uh, for him to do because uh, some punches are going through. He got hit. If DeLuna can keep up this pace, he's going to take over the fight. He, he very well can, and he might be taking over this round right here. So uh, turning into an MMA fight. And, uh, Camacho complaining to me a ref about behind the head. I mean, yes, that's the second time he's complained. Hey, but red corners, they, they have to play to the refs a little bit. They, he's the more veteran fighter in a sense. He's going to try to play those veteran cards in a sure. way. Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Now, DeLuna's got that left jab, and it snuck through about three yeah. times already here. And the right hand. Right hand. hand. Yep. So he's taking, oh. he's taking the fight oh. from Camacho. And there you go. Both guys landing good shots. Nice combination by both. But if, if, if the fight devolves into that, I mean, it cannot be a firefight for Camacho because Camacho does not have the power that the Luna has. He will lose that fight. And like we've said earlier in this round, it, it is slipping away from Camacho. And this round, I think, is sort of that final nail in the coffin that Camacho now has to regroup. He now has to reassess and adapt because he's, he's losing. He's losing bad right now. And he is. He is. Uh, he, he's definitely uh, got this round uh, slipping out of his hands, and he needs to do something about it in this last 30 seconds. Good right hand there, but another good right hand. Oh, oh. one, two, another lands right clean. Hand. Oh, no left. Sense his blood in the water right now. And Deluna showing no fear. A lot of good head movement. Chance of Mexico from the crowd. I mean, of course, this is Deluna's most crowd. And he's showing out right now. That was a fantastic round for him. That, that, that absolutely was a fantastic round for him. And I'll be honest, the way Camacho looked in there, it looked like he lost some mental steam after those shots were landing. You can tell that he was almost deflated emotionally in there. 
There, absolutely, and there was a couple of times where he did react, and you know when somebody smiles, that's when they get hurt. Yes. And he had him smiling a couple of times, and so you know he was he was backpedaling, he was really from some of those shots that landed. And you're right, he started out he he started out great, slowed down a little bit in round two, and who knows that's anybody's round perhaps, but this was definitely the Luna's round, and if momentum continues. Luna's gonna have, you know. Success, he's gonna have a lot of success there and he's gonna, he's gonna hurt success. Camacho. Absolutely, he, he's, he's gonna have a good time out tonight because he has the momentum going now. It seems like, psychologically speaking, he's won that fight. And now he just has to finish it off yes. physically. Yes, exactly. Because Christian does seem to be affected by uh, some of those blows that went through. Maybe he wasn't expecting them. Uh, maybe something hurt him a little more than, uh, than we know but he's uh, definitely got this fight slipping out of his hands, and he needs to come back in this fight quickly. He needs to win this round. You know, usually in a fight, that first round's a fill-out process, but then somebody starts gaining momentum, somebody starts winning, and then at least at one point in every fight, the person that's losing has to adapt. And if they can't, they will continue to lose or get finished. That's just how it is. And that's exactly it. And Alexis, he's going in. He's got great head movement. He's got great feet work. He's throwing punches in bunches. He's throwing combinations. He's landing. And hard shots. Seems hard hard shot. shots. And it seems to have taken the wind out of the sail of Christian Camacho. Yes, yeah, so those, body, those body shots definitely have an effect. Good counter oh, there good by Camacho. There, Camacho. Yes. Well, Pull back right good. straight. Excellent. But he's getting clipped like that, and he can't be getting clipped. If you're going to be the counter box and land a single right hand and, and win a round off of that, you cannot be getting caught like this in between. No, and Alexis is adjusting to every time Camacho moves. Alexis just like adjusted and, and got a punch in. Yes. He's just not throwing wildly. He's adjusting and looking at his target and hitting it. Well, and there he goes. It wasn't a knockdown, the ref didn't call it a knockdown. Was it a headbutt? Elbow? Mm -hmm. It was either a headbutt or an, uh, an elbow. I think it was an elbow. It was an elbow, yeah. I did not see any contact between their heads, yeah, but I'm not sure if I had that correct angle to see the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, hopefully neither, neither of them are broken open and we can con continue this fight. Yeah. Looks like everybody's okay, and the referee gives them the signal. I'm not sure if that little break uh, was better for Camacho or, or for Deluna. Yeah. De Luna. But right there at the end, Camacho was taking some some punishment. It looked like so maybe that might have uh, definitely benefited him at, at yeah. the very least. Yeah. yeah, it's very beneficial for him to have that stop. The left hand there by De Luna. Camacho needs to be moving on the ropes at least. Absolutely. Oh, good right hand, good left hand there by Camacho. Absolutely, yes. And he did it coming off the ropes. As you said, he doesn't want to be moving around the ropes on the, or on the corners, because that's when he's getting taken advantage of. He moves away and immediately scores some punches. But these guys are in there. They're oh, body oh. Work. What are you Come on. What could it be? I didn't, I, don't see, I didn't see an elbow land. I, I don't know if anyone at, at home did. Clearly the ref saw an elbow. I don't know if it was an elbow or if there was a shot that might have been a little low. But he, I didn't see anything that was he's blatantly. Not, no, he's not complaining about low blows. He's complaining about something to the head. To the head, yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see really anything to stop the fight there. It must be something that when DeLuna throws, he's missing with the shot and then he's hitting with the elbow. You know, that happens. It's rare, but it happens. Well, and, and when they were getting in close, there were some elbows being thrown. Better round for Camacho, but I still give that round to DeLuna. Yeah, I just have to give the same. DeLuna he is just too active. He's scoring more. And, the, and the better shots. And yes. the better shots, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it seems like he has the harder shots. And he, 
has his man going backwards. He has his man on the ropes. And uh, you know, he's, uh, right now, he's showing a lot of technique, a lot of patience. He's picking his shots, and uh, he's very, very accurate so far. And aggression like that from DeLuna can only be discounted in terms of judging when it's ineffective aggression. It's clearly not ineffective aggression right now. No. And uh, what do you think Christian has to do to win this fight? It's tough because I, right now it's one of those things where I have no idea what the judges are seeing. But how I have it is that he's down three to one. So it's possible if he wins these next two rounds, he gets a draw. It's possible if he, if he wins the next two rounds, he gets a knockdown, he wins. That's sort of what he has to do. How he does that, I don't know because I think his usual game of being the counterboxer is not working. I think this is a smaller ring than he's used to. DeLuna is pressing him too much, and DeLuna is good. DeLuna is not a scrub. He's not some guy from Mexico that you got. He is a talented, undefeated fighter with knockout power. And that knockout power is on display right now. He just caught him with a right there that got Camacho's attention, and there he is again, up against the ropes. And, he, and for DeLuna, just keep doing this. Keep, keep him stationary along the ropes. Absolutely. And then land combinations. And DeLuna is, at, at a very young age, looks much more experienced right now. And honestly, if you watch some of his earlier life. fights uh, on you know, his Facebook channel or whatever, like his Facebook uh, page, he's come a long way. He's a guy that his footwork has improved drastically, his head movement has improved drastically, his cardio has improved drastically as well. This is DeLuna that has really been shaped by his undefeated record and is now ready for this moment. Camacho, maybe because of the, the stagnation in his career, that's affecting him. You know, both guys do have a layoff due to COVID, but maybe because Camacho is 30 years old and not 22, that year and a half off affects him more. Absolutely, absolutely. And DeLuna at age 22 looks very, very calm, very, very methodical. He's not rushing anything. He's picking his shots. He's picking some very oh. accurately thrown punches. And he's got Camacho backing up most of this fight. And there he is again with his back up against the ropes. And DeLuna is scoring. Oh, There's good right hand. Right, right hand. And again, this is right where Camacho does not want to be, standing stationary. Oh, good left hand there by DeLuna. Right. Oh. Camacho's landing good shots there, but I don't know if it's enough. I don't know. I don't know if it's enough to win the round or, uh, you know, upset the momentum of DeLuna. Of DeLuna. Absolutely, yes. Because DeLuna's not backing down. And he is right there throwing punch for punch, or maybe two punches per punch. Yep. And he's showing no fear. And uh, good he's round. got one more round to go. And He's right there in this fight. I gave that last round to do uh, Alexis DeLuna. Right now I have him up five rounds to one. On my scorecard at least, Camacho needs a knockout. Again, I have no idea what the judges are seeing. And, and that's the whole thing. These judges have shown wisdom in fights and then took that wisdom and threw it right out the window for the next one. And so you wonder if their glasses went out with it or not because they're obviously not watching all the fights that we're watching. At the very least, yes. I'm sorry, but that's the truth and I think you kind of both know. Yeah, there, there, there were some uh, puzzling decisions earlier. So you're exactly right. We don't know what they see and, and how some, they're scoring some it. Some of these rounds are close. Like the last round was competitive. It, that's different than being a toss-up round. I think people often misunderstand that. Oh, that's a close round. It was a competitive round. That does not mean it's a toss-up round. Toss-up round means like that first round, Luis Rubicava and Charles Clark. You know, nothing happens or too much happens, and you have no idea who, who's winning it really. Exactly, and 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 I have it. 
three rounds to two, but that, uh, so that, that uh, there's that one round that could have been a toss-up. I could get a, easily given it, you know, away and would have a four to four to one type thing. So it's it's, a, it's closer than I think what the scores are going to show. Yeah. But definitely, definitely, Camacho needs to do something spectacular to win this fight. He has two minutes and eight seconds to do so. Yeah, Camacho, I don't think, is uh, really trying to get the knockout here. I think he, he understands that he's going to lose this fight and that pressing to Luna will probably just get him hurt more. Well, it does seem that DeLuna does have Camacho on his on his bicycle because he's backing up, he's moving away, and uh, it seems like the momentum from round one to round six has just slowly but surely gone towards DeLuna. Yeah. And you can hear the crowd. They know it. And it's one of the things, too, where, yeah, maybe some rounds are close, but we know who's the one really hurting there, who's the one that's having to adapt. It's Camacho. He's the one that's hurting there. He's the one that has asked to adapt. You know, regardless of how close these rounds are in the 10 point life system, the Luna is clearly winning the fight. Yes. Whether you score a couple of rounds differently than you or I might, I don't think anybody can sit here, except for maybe the judges, and see that yes. Christian Camacho is losing this fight. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he's going to have to do something. He's got 48 seconds left to do it. It just seems to me that Alexis De Luna has been the better boxer. Yeah, because it's not just aggression and power that's winning it for De Luna. It is skill. Like you're saying, like he's bobbing and weaving to get on the inside. His head movement is light years better than when he started. His footwork is a lot better than when he started. And that's allowing him to get on the inside and land those shots. It's not just aggression and athleticism. It's skill behind that, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, like, and there's some technique and skill right there for you. He is really showing some great boxing skills. And I would love to see some fight stats and the accuracy of which Alexis has been throwing his punches. Great fight. What an awesome fight. Good fight. Very Christian Camacho, or the big promoter is going to be calling him right now. It's very possible. 